Big K, I want to store a shamisen properly. How do I do it? Ah, excellent question, quick take Jack. Storing your shamisen is easy to do, and there are several options available depending on your needs. Let's start with open air options first and work our way to cases. First, if your shamisen is in a safe space, it's totally fine to leave it on a guitar stand. Assuming that there's no chance of it getting knocked over, theoretically you could leave your shamisen there indefinitely and it'd be just fine. The one potential problem with leaving your shamisen in the open is the accumulation of dust. No matter how clean your room is, eventually your shamisen will get a thin film of dust, which is extra noticeable on the highly polished wood. Now, one thing to know is that dust won't harm the shamisen at all, so it's nothing you really need to worry about. But if you're like me and prefer to keep your shamisen sparkling, then it's well worth keeping it covered. The most conventional method is using a nagabukuro, which is simply a long cloth sack which the shamisen slides into and is wrapped in. It's the easiest way to keep your shamisen clean when not in use. You can even make your own nagabukuro out of a bed sheet or even just fit it in a plastic bag. Now, you know, a cloth has a nicer feeling than plastic, but, you know, practically speaking, either approach is just fine for keeping the dust off. On a quick linguistic note, uh, the word nagabukuro is actually naga, uh, long, fukuro, uh, bag. And when the two are put together, the fu sound becomes bu, nagabukuro. Uh, in another video, I believe I didn't do that and just called it nagafukuro. Same thing, we, we all know what we're talking about here, which is the sack. Um, thought I'd mention it. Moving on. So, stands are nice, but they do take up floor space. And if you collect a few shamisen, that will quickly start eating up the available space in your room. For this, I prefer using a rubber-coated pronged hooks. Often these are used for garden tools, but I find they work very well for shamisen. To install the hooks, first you need to find the studs in the wall. And definitely Google how to find wall studs if you don't know what they are or where to find them. Be sure to include wall in that term. Otherwise, you are uh, in for a spicy adventure. Once you figure that out, simply drill a hole into the wall and stud uh, at a slightly downward angle, just slightly. Uh, doing this later when you screw in the hook, that slightly downward angle will position the hook at a slightly upwards angle. Doing this, it will be impossible for your shamisen to slide off of the hook on its own. So, the hook needs to be screwed into the wall stud in order to support the weight of the shamisen. However, uh, at least for US uh, building code, I believe wall studs need to be 16 inches apart, and that will limit you on where you can put the hooks. If you want to have more options for hook placement or possibly set multiple hooks, a great method is to first attach a long board to the wall. Douglas fir, oak, plywood, anything you have of that hardness will work just fine. Definitely drill a hole into the board first before screwing in the hook. It'll make it much easier to install the hook and prevent the board from splitting. Again, just like with storing your shamisen on a guitar stand, you might want to put a nagabukuro or some kind of wrap around the shamisen to keep the dust off. Again, not required, uh, but nice if you're into that. So those are the two open air options I like. There's also a traditional type of stand called a kiribako, which is basically a wooden stand that has a housing for the bottom half of the shamisen, and often also has a little drawer on the bottom to keep uh, accessories and such. I used to have one for a while and I really enjoyed, you know, the visual uh, aesthetic of the wood, wood stand, but it does take up a bit of floor space. And once the novelty wore off, personally, I found I you know, preferred hooks on the wall just because they were much more space efficient. However, kiribako are great if you have the floor space and just like the look. Uh, yeah. Next, <clears throat> cases. If you can't hang your shamisen on the wall and your room isn't safe for stands, then definitely cases are the best option. Long pack cases and soft cases are my favorite. Both are lightweight and offer more than enough protection for a room. Furthermore, a closed case keeps the dust off the shamisen, so a nagapukuro isn't really necessary. 
Lastly, there are Mitsuori cases. This case is designed to hold a shamisen with a fully disassembled sole, allowing it to fit in a much smaller space. I'd only suggest this for long-term storage though. A frequent disassembly and assembly of the sole will gradually wear down the joints. So it's best to keep the shamisen assembled if you're playing it regularly. However, if you need to take a hiatus for many months or more, then definitely a Mitsuori case is a great way to store your shamisen with as small a footprint as possible. As a cheap alternative, you can just get a large backpack wrap the individual shamisen parts in light towels and simply pack it in there. And those are my favorite ways of storing shamisen, properly and otherwise. Kyle Abbott